This week on ANN, one of the fastest growing Christian denominations in the world hits a new milestone. A new satellite contract brings Adventist television to the Middle East. And Adventist President Ted Wilson urges young people to demonstrate genuine Christianity. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the Adventist Church is now counting more than 18 million members worldwide, according to new reports from the Church's Office of Archives, Statistics and Research. An estimated 3,000 people join the Adventist Church every day. The Adventist Church is among the fastest growing Christian denominations in the world. We're excited by this growth at a time when globally many religious groups are no longer growing. And we thank God that in the face of challenges such as political oppression, uh, religious persecution, increasing materialism and secularism, this movement, which emphasizes hope and wholeness, is continuing to grow and has now passed this important statistical milestone. A new satellite contract for the Adventist television channel in Beirut is helping bring a message of hope to a wider audience of Arabic-speaking communities in the Middle East. Hope Channel Al Wa'ad last week entered a five-year contract that will significantly expand its satellite coverage in the region. Viewers using the NileSat satellite can now watch Adventist television. NileSat is the largest satellite provider in the Middle East. Satellite is the most common broadcast distribution method in the region. To this point, our Al Wa'ad Hope Channel Middle East broadcasts have been very effective but because of legal restrictions, we could not get into the ideal satellite location. With this new contract, it now opens up huge doors of being co-located with the most popular satellite in all of the Middle East. It opens up to us multiple millions and millions of homes, and all people have to do is reset their channel lineup and they can get Hope Channel right into their homes. It's a fantastic, huge opportunity for the advancement of God's work. Adventist World Church President Ted Wilson urged young people to demonstrate authentic Christianity last week at the annual Generation of Youth for Christ, or GYC, conference. The four-day event brought thousands of Adventists from more than 60 countries to the U.S. state of Florida. Wilson's message focused on the biblical account of Paul's sermon on Mars Hills to Athenians. In the sermon, Paul urges listeners to renounce idolatry and accept a living God. Wilson said Adventists today are confronted by a modern-day Mars Hill as faith and values collide with an increasingly secular world. Wilson also warned against spiritual apathy, disunity, and growing worldliness. Young people at the GYC conference also attended training sessions on outreach and joined in a day of outreach where they offered prayer and spiritual resources to residents of Orlando. An Adventist volunteer missing in Belize was confirmed dead last week. Brian Townsend was reported missing on Christmas Day after a neighbor found signs of struggle at his ransacked home. A body recovered in neighboring Guatemala was later identified as Townsend and ruled a homicide. Townsend was in Belize teaching vocational classes at the Valley of Peace Seventh-day Adventist High School. He had moved to the Central American country to help build the school and a nearby Adventist church, staying on after construction to support the local community. News reports say police in Belize have identified two suspects and are working with Guatemalan authorities in a search. The Global Adventist Church family is praying for spiritual renewal and the outpouring of God's Spirit this week. Ten days of prayer runs through January 18 and invites Adventists worldwide to claim the power of united or corporate prayer. Ten days of prayer for me means coming together and um, uh, talking to God, knowing that uh, so many other people all over the world are praying. And I know that prayer is so powerful when a lot of people come together. God does just amazing things. And um, for me, it may, it, every time that 10 days of prayer has happened, so many miracles have happened. So many opportunities have been opened. God has just opened amazing opportunities for people. So I really would like to encourage um, you, wherever you are, in any country that you are in that whenever 10 days of prayer is happening at your church at your local church just go in there and join in with everybody because you will be surprised at what God can do when a lot of people come together and pray. 
Adventists in the Bahamas are celebrating the centenary of Bahamas Academy with the official launch of a new campus in New Providence. The school began with just two pupils, the children of Adventist missionaries, and now enrolls hundreds of students from kindergarten through 12th grade. Hugh Roach, the first Bahamian principal to lead the school, was present to witness the historic achievement. Eight Adventists in central Malawi were killed last week when lightning struck the Adventist church where they were worshiping. The congregation had gathered for an afternoon prayer meeting in the long way when the lightning struck. Local media reports indicate that numerous other members were hospitalized, although it was not immediately clear whether they were injured by lightning or joined the panic to escape. And finally in the news, the headquarters of the Adventist World Church was the target of cyber theft last week. Cyber criminals defrauded the church of $500,000, money that was being transferred on behalf of a denominational entity. Church officials are cooperating with federal authorities in the ongoing investigation and working with the banks to determine whether any recoveries are possible. Adventist financial officers say no personal donor records or internal accounts were accessed or compromised. Coming up, have you ever considered armchair mission travel? It's more adventurous than you might expect. When I go to sleep, I pray for Jesus to help me not to have bad dreams. Pray for my grandpa because he is in cancer right now. Uh, I pray. I I don't want to get sick anymore. I pray for my family. Please pray seven in the morning, seven in the evening, and seven days a week. The smell in that room, my husband said, was so strong that he felt like he himself was going to suffocate if he stayed there any longer. And so he rushed over to the crib and felt Simon to see if he was still breathing. And he grabbed Simon and brought him out of the room. In the morning, we took him to the doctor and the doctor said, yes, that was definitely a close call, but Simon is great. There's no problem with him whatsoever. And so no longer did I ever feel that those nightly prayers we had for Simon's protection were a routine. Yes, we did them on a routine basis, but they made a difference. My name is Marla, and my prayer was answered. I didn't appreciate uh, God as the champion of freedom until I had the chance and opportunity myself to make decisions over someone else's life. On a daily basis, I decide what happens in someone's life, either in a criminal context, if someone is in front of me on a charged crime and I need to sentence them, or if someone is in front of me on a family matter and I need to decide how the family is going to be run, who will gain custody of the children. It is at that point that I realize that the true champion of freedom is God. Because when I make the decision every day, I'm telling somebody what's going to happen. I am impressing upon them my decision for their life. The ultimate champion of freedom is God. He's not imposing anything on us. All he is saying is, here is my love. Will you choose it? Welcome back. For a look at the current issue of Mission 360, we now turn to Nancy Kite. Have you ever wished you could travel to another country to be a missionary? Maybe do something important for God in a country very different from where you live now? Perhaps you will have a chance to do something like that one day, but until that happens, there is another option. You can be an armchair missionary traveler. Through Mission 360, the official mission magazine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you can travel vicariously to countries all over the world. For instance, in our next issue of Mission 360, you can go to Nigeria and imagine that it was your water tank that was miraculously filled during the drought. Or you can experience the confusion of a young volunteer who's lived in so many countries, she's not sure where to call home. You can read postcards from global mission pioneers who are working in Botswana. And there are dangers to escape in Papua New Guinea. And you can also try some family recipes from South Africa, Russia, and Brazil. You'll have a chance to experience the relief of realizing that it must have been an angel's car that guided you through the darkness in Mozambique. These are just a few of the places that you'll visit on your armchair mission journey. You can request your own free subscription through our website, 
or read these stories and many more online at www.adventismission.org. Thank you for supporting Mission. Adventist volunteer Brendan Roberts took a semester out of college to serve in Thailand. He has advice this week on making a positive impact as a missionary. In 2009, I decided to take a semester off of college to be a student missionary. I wanted to get away from the daily routine of school. I was in my second year of college and was at a crossroads in my life. I was an education major, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a teacher for the rest of my life. So I accepted a call to Bangkok, Thailand. They were in need of English teachers and also documentary filmmakers. Bangkok was a whole nother world to me. It was a place most people wouldn't imagine a missionary would be. But we were there in the concrete jungle where the internet was faster than I had at home and the city bustled day and night. But it was then that I realized that being a missionary isn't about where you are. It's about people. It's about relationships. It's about showing love to others. Many people have different experiences when they dedicate a time of their lives to be a missionary. Some could be good, some maybe not so good. But if you keep your eyes on the goal, which is to serve others, no matter where you are or what your personal experience is, you will know for certain that you left a positive impact on the world around you. And who knows, you might just make that turn in the crossroads of life that you've been searching for. Instead of a teacher, I became a journalism and communication major, and that's why I'm talking to you here today. But don't take my word for it. If you want to discover more about yourself and more about others than you ever thought was possible, become a missionary, wherever you are. A campaign against child abuse launched by Adventist Risk Management offers practical ways to protect children at your church or school. Karina Franca reports. Every year around the world, more than 40 million children under the age of 15 will be abused. As Seventh-day Adventist Church, we must establish proactive child abuse prevention plans at our churches and schools. Here are four P's of child abuse prevention. The first P is premises review. Monitor the arrival and departure of your children at your facility. Ensure there is adequate lighting and vision panels indoors. The second P is personnel administration. Carefully interview staff and volunteers. Provide training about child abuse and reporting. Ensure that there is adequate supervision at all times. An adult should never be alone with one child. Be prepared to enforce the expected code of conduct. The third P is protecting children and youth. Monitor interactions for appropriate behavior in and outside of your program. Use sign-in and sign-out controls to be sure children are released only to an authorized adult. Promptly report incidents to the appropriate authorities. The 4P is program review. You can lead by example and show your staff, volunteers and children under your care that you take child protection seriously. Be alert to bullying and adopt a zero tolerance policy. Teach them about developing strong Christian friendships. ARM has rolled out a campaign to stop child abuse. Visit the7campaign.com and learn how you too can stand against child abuse. Adventist World Radio manages the use of shortwave radio frequencies to make sure listeners get a strong, clear signal when they tune in. This week, Dowell Chow sits down with AWR radio engineer Claudia Stedio to learn more. Claudius, as the Frequency Management Director for Adventist World Radio, what is frequency management and what does that mean for Adventist World Radio? We use several stations on shortwave to reach several areas in the world and uh, the frequencies we select, they have to be uh, calculated twice a year selected properly and then coordinated internationally with other broadcasters. Because we're not the only ones. We're not the only ones, of course. Many nations, they broadcast on shortwave, so we have to coordinate it with them so that there are no collisions. Um, what does it mean for AWR? We reach the areas we intend to reach by a proper, strong signal to get the message out. That is the goal. So you calculate the audience, the distance of the audience, and you, you program your broadcast by managing that frequency to make sure it reaches the people with a strong signal. Yes, that is the main task I do. Just a, a technical task to make sure that we reach the area we want to reach by a strong 
clear broadcast signal. Obviously, that's a very important part of what we do. That is a very important part. Otherwise, we wouldn't reach these people. Thank you for sharing that with us today. Okay. Still ahead, one-minute devotionals give your spiritual life a boost. But up next, a new television show follows three hosts as they get up close and personal with God's creation. While reading The Great Hope, I came across a passage that filled me with such joy and promise, I'd like to share it with you. As travelers perishing from thirst welcome with joy a living water spring, so did these souls receive the message of heaven. The laborers in the field, the artisans in the workshop, cheered their daily toil by talking of the precious truths of the Bible. At evening, instead of resorting to the wine shops, they assembled in one another's homes to read God's word and join in prayer and praise. This gives me hope because just through prayer and praise, through fellowshipping with each other, we will shine the light of Jesus through our communities. In high school, we had a recital one year. Teenage musicians, they were already pretty good at what they did. There was one musician, though, that struggled from the beginning. His fingers stumbled, and they were all on top of each other. You could see his frustration building. Until one point, he just lifted both of his hands and dropped them, pounded on the keyboard. It's like we heard every note all at the same time. The music teacher joined the student on the stage. He said to him, you know, sometimes, we just need a do-over. We need to start fresh. One way of thinking about baptism is a fresh start. Baptism acknowledges where I am, but it announces where I'm going. It's a priority to live life with God, no matter where I've been, what I've done, what I've thought about doing. Baptism isn't to make us perfect. It's to announce a priority to live first with God. Even though that recital was long ago, I'll always remember because the teacher walked off the stage with the student and entered again and sat down beside him. The teacher said to the student, now start over and I'll stay right here with you. And what we heard was simply beautiful. Welcome back. A new television and web series called Animal Encounters puts God back at the heart of nature programming. Carmen McMurdy has a preview. Holidays are over, presents have been opened, and the excitement is behind you. And now another year is here with all the routine and responsibilities of life. But we have a great new show to break that routine, Animal Encounters. It's a documentary where each episode focuses on the rescue and nurture of animals that have been orphaned through hunting, injured in the wild, abandoned as pets, or threatened by the environment. Join the hosts as they ride elephants, play with cheetahs and monkeys, and learn to trust wolves. You can feel their excitement as they dive with the great white sharks and spend time with wild meerkats. Cute animals, amazing stories, and a renewed appreciation for our Creator God. All that wrapped into a new show. Whether you're 5 or 95, you'll love it. Don't miss Animal Encounters this January. For Hope Channel, I'm Carmen McMurdy. The worst experience for me was to touch a snake. <laughs> I'm actually from the north of Brazil. And uh, in the north of Brazil, near to the Amazon, we respect the snakes. The snakes are there in their place, in their environment. We don't go there, we don't touch kind of animal that you don't touch. Coming to the Hope Channel in January 2014. Adventist tech and media experts are gearing up for the 10th annual Global Adventist Internet Network, or GAIN, conference, planned for February. John Beckett has a preview on this week's Tech Corner. Each year, church leaders and lay people interested in using technology for mission gather to share what they've learned and work on new ideas. This year, the conference called GAIN, or GAIN, will meet in February in Baltimore, Maryland. 
the unique mix of communicators, technology presenters, and attendees offers a chance to be inspired and learn about the interesting ways technology is being used all over the world to share the good news. Everybody interested in using technology for ministry is welcome to attend. If you want to come to the conference in Baltimore, you should sign up soon at gain.adventist.org. Other meetings dealing with technology and mission are often planned by church divisions and unions. You can check with your union or division communication director to see if a conference is being planned in your area. These are great chances to learn what's happening and meet with people that have common interests. You may also want to visit the GAIN website to watch videos of presentations from other years. From there, you can also find a link to the GAIN Facebook group. A daily devotional web series produced by Adventist Supporting Ministry, It Is Written, is designed to fit even the busiest schedules. It Is Written sent this preview. In Matthew 4.4, the Word of God says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every Word is a one-minute Bible-based daily devotional presented by Pastor John Bradshaw and designed especially for busy people like you. Look for Every Word on selected networks or watch it online every day on our website, itiswritten.com. Receive a daily spiritual boost. Watch Every Word. You'll be glad you did. Here's a sample. This is Times Square in New York City. It's called the crossroads of the world. And every year on the night of December the 31st, gazillions of people cram into this place to welcome in the new year. That ball up there behind me drops down and when the clock strikes midnight, the celebrations begin a new year, that's a time of opportunity. We look back over the year that's gone, hopefully not with too much regret, and we look forward to the year that's coming with hope. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. What's the new year gonna hold for you? My hope and prayer is that whatever it brings, you'll be in Christ. Now let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, Adventists take a leading role in health outreach. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On January 5 in 1879, Adventists took a leading role in organizing the American Health and Temperance Association in Battle Creek, Michigan. It is a forerunner of today's International Health and Temperance Association. Fifteen years later, on January 5, 1894, the first Adventist camp meeting in Australia began at Middle Brighton in the state of Victoria. On January 6 in 1900, the first known ordination of Seventh-day Adventist deaconesses took place in Australia when W.C. White ordained two women as deaconesses at the Ashfield Church in the suburbs of Sydney. On January 8, 1876, the first Seventh-day Adventist baptism in Germany took place when Jakob Erzberger baptized eight persons at Solingen, and Solingen became the site of the first Adventist church in Germany with 25 members. On January 8, 1897, G.P. Riggs died at Liverpool. In 1896, Riggs, a British coal porter, and two nurses, George and Eva Kerr, went to Ghana joining Carl Rudolph, the first Adventist missionary there, in a new mission statement in the inland city of Essiem. Sadly, the Kerr's two children both died within a year and after canvassing for eight months, illness forced Riggs' departure for England where he died. Adventist mission was founded on the willing sacrifice of many missionaries whose memories we should honor. That was this week in Adventist history. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, find us on Facebook. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide and find links to more stories, photos, and videos. Just visit Facebook slash Adventist News. Our good news for this week comes from the Old Testament book of Psalms. The passage says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.